I don't know if I have a favorite shark. Hammerheads are also pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And tiger sharks. I like thresher sharks. I don't think I've ever heard of those. They have a really, really long caudal fin. Oh, yeah, I think I like those as well. I think yeah. I like them. Whale shark is a shark. <laughs> well, because I, I'm not sure if it's the Thank right you. one I'm thinking of. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Nice pillow flows. <laughs> I kind of like the, the cat shark that we see down here sometimes. They're really cute. You know, fun fact about cat sharks is they're not actually cats. No. Let me look them up. <laughs> oh, the cat sharks are cute, yeah. yeah. I think they're perfect fish for me. Oh. <laughs> I like um, mackerel. Are those sharks? sharks? Oh, okay. I mackerel sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just making sure I was reading it correctly. With the big, big mouths. What about basking sharks? That was the chat's favorite shark, the chat question. Chat has good taste in sharks. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I never tasted a basking shark. Ooh. <laughs> There's a lot of different types of sharks. If you tilt your head, this looks flat. <laughs> Is that why you keep veering off one direction or another? Because I'm tilting my head. Tilting your head and then yeah. following it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to go down slope for the last part of this dive, so. Roger that. We are just about 100 meters away from the last waypoint. Roger. I was just about to ask you, so you read my mind. <laughs> so we could just stay here. We could stop the ship and not go to waypoint six and stay around this part if you'd rather. Yeah, Acro. let's do that. This looks more interesting. All right, mm -hmm. Roger. position. Roger. Is that a fish swimming? Fish swimming. Or is it a shrimp? Here. Yeah. Hmm. That's a fish swimming. Ooh. What is that? A fish swimming. Bless you. Cuskeel. Let's do a shrimp zoom. Shrimp zoom. Oh, what's oh, this white squishy? Yeah. Ignore the shrimp. Ignore the, the shrimp. White squishy. white squishy. And a holothurian in the. What are you? Run. <laughs> Look at its legs go. Out of, out of focus is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Steve. That was some kind of pirakari, I think. Let's do a step back this way. Just do west. Uh, Thirty meters. Okay. Please. It's a gorgeous pile of pillows and tubes here. Everything's hanging on. Someone thought they saw a squat lobster swimming. I but I, I didn't okay. see that. Do they swim? Yeah. They do. Sure do. Ooh, Paula yeah. showed us like this glorious video of like so many of them swimming with squids all around them. It was kind of insane. Yeah, that's the red pelagic uh, squad lobster. Mm -hmm. Red pelagic crab. And California. You get that? Mm. Do, does anyone know if cat sharks glow? Chat says, cat sharks actually glow a pretty green that is theorized that it's used so they communicate with each other. Is that a... Okay, sure, whatever speed. I can look it up, actually. Oh. Close enough, that's fine. That's they fine. do glow. Fluorescence. Yeah. Chat fact. That's fine. I changed my shark favorite. It is a cat <laughs> shark now. 
We should have a DJ soundboard where you can press a button for chat fact. Press a button for we shrimp need, count. We need a shrimp count, a chat <laughs> fact. And one that says boy trioidal. <laughs> Some nice looking sponge and anemone. Yeah. That sponge is the Euplectilidae sponge. Do you know all these by heart or are you looking up a little guide? I have a resource. But I also do know them by heart by now. <laughs> I just need the resource for the spelling. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You plectilidae? Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, probably plectella. Sometimes they have some shrimps or things inside. We got about 10 more minutes of bottom time. Roger. 10 to, 10 to 12, so. Any last second requests? Let's make it happen. No, these rocks don't look good to me. They look... Bad rocks. They're going to be all in place and welded. Yeah. What's that on that coral? We could have a zoom on that. Go ahead, please. Looks That's just the very like a top of the leftmost. Very top of the leftmost? Well, the one that we're on now. Is it a little... Brittle star? Little star, Here's not that one, the other one. Star. And the, that one, yeah. yeah. Here, it could Is be a crinoid. crinoid, a really tiny one, a tiny baby one. Oh yeah, same color as the. Oh, well, we coral. also in the okay, cinema cam we got on. a fish swimming in the way background. Can I have a reset, please? You can even just do it to USBL instead of cursor. That'll be fine. Okay. And it didn't go. Yeah, it didn't go, yeah, so I think... Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. So, when I turn around for us to come off the seafloor, hmm. I'm going to be turning to port, right? Exactly, yeah. I was actually just thinking about that, you know, to ask you if you could figure it out, and you beat me to it. Awesome job. And got it right. You're going to be going to port, yep. And that will also take my wrap out, because you go into port, it's the same as me going to starboard. Fishy right there. A fish! Because we have half wrap and the negative half wrap. Yeah, so they'll cancel out. Yay! That's very nice. We can have a fish zoom, please. Lots of fish up here. One. I'll try and paint it with the lasers. Is it using its barbels in action that right big. now? Mm. Is that a kumba? Is it? I don't know. Don't they usually have the that little triangular fin sticking up out of their heads? Yeah, the other the grenadier types. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know either. <laughs> Backing up. Yeah. Would you say it's it about is looking for <laughs> crinoids some. doing something? Thirty centimeters long. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, Kamite. I think it's a keeper. It's looking for snacks. Snacks. Soon we will all be looking for snacks. Looking Ooh. for squat lobsters. <laughs> Paul is always <laughs> looking for squat lobsters. <laughs> they, they are uh, one of the species of food, of food of, for fishes. So. And for ROVs. For ROVs as well. Um, I have to read this chat comment. It's about us counting shrimp. Um, they say, we built Shrimp City. 
<laughs> we built Shrimp City on this atoll. That sounds like it comes from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's someone's dad, I bet. Really appreciated your commitment to singing that. Yeah, the performance was. Uh, Thank was you. What sold the whole thing. I usually don't <laughs> sing publicly. The joke. <laughs> the well, joke bravo. Thing, the joke was eh, but uh, the performance. I loved uh, that joke. The performance sold it. No wait, that might oh. come from my mom. She's no, the one Maddie's who asking makes me to jokes. flag that. <laughs> There's a coral here that's so thin you can hardly even see it. Oh can we yeah. have a zoom on this mystery coral, please? Very wispy. Oh, yeah. That's you can see it in the cinema pretty well now. Mm -hmm. Although it's, it's a little blurry. Chrysogorgia that's not doing so hot. Yeah. Or is it, does it, can it retract its polyps? Yes. They can retract. I think it's a metallogorgia. Metallogorgia, yes. So some of the polyps are out. Very few yeah, of them. A couple of them are, yeah. That's a good zoom shot. Really weird. Yeah, I think that big fish was a cuskeel. Cuskeel? All right. Thank you. Someone's dad said, heard that, wasn't me, I swear, I guess, to the singing dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whose dad said that, though. They just said dad. We got dads in the chat. <laughs> dad chat. Dad chat. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear the dads representing out there. Rob and I have been accused of doing dad jokes. Dad jokes are very popular, though. So. Here, so. I used to think it was just being witty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're halfway there. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> this is a Proes crinus ruberimus. It's a red stocked crinoid. Proes crinus ruberimus? Ruberimus. Ruberimus. What's this translucent spot up here? Can we a zoom little, in on this translucent spot, please? A little orby thing. What is that? What is that? Ooh. What are you? Oh, it's got tentacles. That's a good eye. Of some kind. Ooh. An anemone? Can the cinema cam focus a little more? I don't know who's controlling that. I think it's on auto. Yeah. It's all the focus we, can, we could. All right, thank you. Anemone. Keeping our delta low. 
Sure. Who yeah. Is, um, if you want. Yes. You can start spinning your head around now for recovery, and then I can actually reach reach that pick to gorge you. Oh, there's a fish watching. You can just click, 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 click. As long as it doesn't get more than like 120 degrees ahead, then you're all good. The blue of these Victagorgias are like very stark. They're beautiful. Okay, let's zoom on this Victagorgia, please. Little fish too, bonus fish. Bonus fish. I think the Victagorgia are my favorite. Your favorite? Yeah, corals. The the firework thing was a coral, oh, right? Oh yeah, I but forgot about the Those the Victagorgia are my favorite. It's being strangled mm -hmm. at its base. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Oh. But I think color-wise, the, these blue ones kind of are my favorite. Look at that big black coral in the cinema yeah, can. Oh, beautiful. beautiful, yeah. We should zoom in. You yeah, come out a little bit, please, Dave. Yeah, good there. I can find it. Steve says that this piece of Victoria is, Victor <coughs> is close to Victoria Alba. All right, zoom in there, please. Let's see if I can not be bouncy. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Right, thank you. And we're coming off bottom. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. Is my heading looking all right? Heading is looking great. Roger that. Um, someone in chat was saying, could that um, circle squishy translucent thing with the up. tentacles have been... A coralimorph? Coralimorph. Coralimorph. The, the one... Yeah. But I didn't... I, I you don't remember. I don't remember. Is it stick time? Chat was saying that Victor Gorgias are usually more of a purple than a blue, and I remember on like the last couple dives we've seen more purpley ones, but these are more towards the blue yeah. spectrum of purple. I think that would uh, lend itself to your watercolor medium. The, the bluish. Yeah. I'll make a note of doing one of them in my sketchbook. It's just a really neat color. I married an artist, so I uh, I know how you guys think. I was muted. Yeah. You got cap copy that? Can you do an off-bottom gauge check, please? Roger. You said, you said you're when you're done, you can leave it on the craft comp. I want to show you something on the software. Okay. Dave, you said your, w your wife does quilting. Does she do other art? Uh, not so much anymore. Uh, she's done all kinds of things. Um, she used to uh, draw and paint. Uh, she liked acrylics. Um, but uh, she's always uh, sewn uh, since she was a little kid. Uh, nice. Her mom and her sister 
uh, and her used to make their own clothes uh, out of necessity and have much money, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but she used to knit, crochet, embroider, cross stitch. Uh, she has problems with her hands now as she's gotten older. But she does uh, very intricate, very fussy quilts. Yeah, my what? friends that crochet say that the the crochet needles that they make really don't help out with like hand movements. It's like hard on the wrists. Yeah, yeah. My wife has uh, has some some issues with her hands, but uh, she uh, she's a quilter. Uh, it's sort of because her mother was a quilter, uh, and so she started working with her mom doing quilts, and now she does it uh, quite a bit. She she makes lots and lots of quilts gives them away donates them oh that's nice oh yeah I have some pictures I'll show you some pictures if you're interested yeah definitely I can't sew I, I dabble in um cross stitch and embroidery but I can't sew or fathom quilting at all <laughs> it's uh it's very it's very geometric, uh, at, at least the kinds of patterns that uh, that she does, where she's doing uh, you know, lots of small, teeny tiny, usually triangular pieces, and then piecing them together into patterns and make a you know. And she'll work all day and make one square, and she only needs you know 29 more squares so mm -hmm. to make the top, and then. It has a border, and then it has a binding, and then it has a backing, and then, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to it. Yep. I know my way around a fabric store, too. <laughs> Anyone else in the, the control van have some creative hobbies? I do a little bit too much, I'd say. Oh. <laughs> I play the bass guitar. Oh. Um, cool. I also do art. If I didn't go to school for science, I would have gone to school for visual art. Uh, but my mother was like, do you want to be a starving artist? And I might have not been a starving artist, but she was very direct about it. So I was like, you know what? Wow. I also enjoy science. <laughs> and that's why I ended up going this route. Um, I also do science communication. And so, so do you want to be a starving scientist? And <laughs> yeah, right? We took, a, a <laughs> we took opposite paths there. I was going to do science art, and I went art. But my mom was pretty supportive of that. So <laughs> It's nice when parents are supportive. <laughs> <laughs> you can do both, so, you know. Exactly, and that's what I'm doing now with my SciComm brand, The Imaginative Scientist. I blend visual art and traditional outreach. And where can people find that, people, that page? <laughs> people can find that on Instagram at imaginative sci. That's the word imaginative and then SCI. Thank you for the free promotion. Yeah, no, <laughs> your page is, it looks like you put a lot of work into it, so. I definitely enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it. So. I collect rocks. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> from, the, from the surface or? You do. If we were to go on a hike, would you just be picking up rocks and putting it them in your depends pocket? Depends on the rock. <laughs> what I do, if, when I do go on a vacation or someplace, I do like to bring a rock back from wherever I, wherever I've been. I, I do that too. I do that too. And I take a certain rock with me anytime I go on vacation. Yeah, you take a rock with you. Yep. Like, from home. It's, it's a special rock. Okay. Same rock goes with you on all vacations, or do you leave it behind? Usually, I, I've taken it down to Alvin and any mountain I've climbed. It's always been with me. Pet rock? Is yeah, it with you this time? Does it have a name? I forgot it this time. I, <gasps> I put it out, but I didn't bring it. But, but this is a vacation, believe me. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. No, I, I, I would have. I would have wanted to, but I just forgot this so time. So line up this view in exactly the way you want it. Spend some time. Get that camera view perfect on the craft comp there.
And what we can do is we can save that as a preset. Oh, thank you. Well, this dive started out a little slow for us, but I think this last uh, last watch was really nice. Yeah. Um, I know an artist that they will take a dirt sample from wherever they travel and make it into a pigment yeah. and paint with it, which is really cool. And I've been wanting to try it, but it's like very time consuming to like get it fine enough, like crush it down to a fine enough grain to like make into a watercolor, but it's some really nice, they get some really nice colors out of it. Ish. I like to draw. Yeah. I, w I, use, I think I as happy as I can like be about it. I would like to be better on it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like amazing to draw. You can, you know, just do it all. Anyone have non-creative hobbies that they want to share? Is gardening creative or not? I think it's I think creative. It'd be creative right? Yeah. Yeah. You Traveling. designed the layout. Traveling. Yeah. I like to rate creme brulees at different oh. restaurants. Oh, <laughs> creme brulee, that's my go. -to. Wow, yeah. do, <laughs> it's do amazing. Make your own? Do you have like a no, top, not yet. Oh, if like I want a top to. Top ten list. I gotta get that torch action yeah, going. It's, it's, it, it takes a while to get that down. Do you have like a top ten? I'll try list it when I get back to live. Creme brulees. Yeah. Yeah. What's your top ten list of creme brulees? Top ten list. Top ten list. My very favorite creme brulee is, is by a spot in Toronto. Um, it's been a the long keyboard? time since I've been there because I moved away from Toronto about three years ago, so I can't remember what it's called now. But the reason why I really liked it is because they had what? over 12 different flavors of creme brulee and really unique flavors as well. So things like ube and pandan and um, Ferrero Rocher. It's quite nice. Wow. Uh, if you remember what it's called, I... Uh, let's see if Google remembers. <laughs> Does Google ever forget? <laughs> I, I think my first was my favorite. Oh, yeah. Your yeah. first one? <laughs> Creme brulee. Yeah. Do you not, are you not a fan of them? I love them. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I actually have ramekins and a little torch that when I want to, I make my own. Oh, fancy. Nice. Yeah. I had a creme brulee cake once Ooh. from a, like a fancy, it, it's kind of, it was kind of like a Whole Foods, but it wasn't a Whole Foods. It was called um, the Fresh Market or something in, in Mount Airy in Philadelphia, but um, they had a I, creme brulee cake, and it I was done, great. Very I cool. did yeah. the wrong thing. I did find the name of that restaurant. It's called Crack to Creme. 1360 oh, yeah. Bathurst what, Street for anybody in Toronto. I think I've heard of that. <laughs> it's amazing. It's really good. Oh, All okay. they serve is creme yeah, brulee. Yeah, yeah. I do want to go to Toronto one day, so I'll definitely go there. Toronto is great. Highly yeah, recommend. Yep, yeah, me we too. Best city in Canada. Hot take. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm very biased. Whoa. I said it, Trevor. <laughs> oh, them's fighting words. I think you mispronounced the worst word. Well, Trevor, what's the best city in Canada, in your opinion? The other ones. Oh. Anything oh. else. <laughs> wow, Trevor. <laughs> I thought we had bonded together as Canadians. Canadian. Isn't that kind of Canadian's thing? Is like That's true. Hating on Toronto. Well, there's a, there's a lot to say about Victoria. Yes. Yeah, Victoria is gorgeous. A lot gorgeous. to say about Vancouver. Vancouver is well. a great city. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan of Vancouver. It's it's it fits a certain niche. I'm not really a fan of Vancouver either because I'm not really a fan of cities. But I think it's a great city. But Montreal is beautiful. Yeah. Ottawa, lovely. Um, Nova Scotia, St. John's, beautiful. That's what I haven't done. Is I, ha I haven't been to the Maritimes. I oh I'd yeah. Love to go out there. Yeah. As long as you don't call Newfoundland the Maritimes, because they'll get angry at you. Really? Uh, well, Newfies are. They're not, they're not part of the Maritimes. A unique breed. Special breed. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Calgary, Edmonton, and everything in between because I've driven the Deerfoot Trail. Oh. I've driven from Anchorage to Edmonton and then down the Deerfoot Trail to Calgary and then uh, across the border and into Montana. Wait, which one is right, right click? Not really a city, more of a of a town, but uh, Banff is very cool. Oh my God! I've always wanted to go there. It's in the Canadian Rockies. It's 
gorgeous. They have urban elk. They have elk that wander around town. Victoria has urban deer. They have a population of deer that roams all over the place. Yeah. And in the spring, it's adorable because their fawns are everywhere. Oh, yeah. I see too many deer, or when growing up, I've seen too many deer. They don't really excite me anymore. <laughs> Do you know what they call a deer with no eyes? What do they call a deer with no eyes? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Do you know what they call a deer with no eyes and no legs? No. Still no idea. <laughs> a good one. <laughs> can you keep it going? I can, but then it gets uh, okay. a little off color. <laughs> Do keep you remember it. the year you had your first creme brulee, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> good, good try. <laughs> Actually, it was in graduate school. Nice. I mean, it was a little place a quarter mile from where we lived called Chez Pascal. Ooh. And then Sounds shortly nice. after, and he was a, um, uh, made desserts in France, that's where he learned. But then they moved their restaurant farther north, so didn't get there as often. Nice. But it was it's just incredible French food. And now it's a really bad Chinese restaurant. Oh, well, there'll always be another French restaurant, hopefully. They're actually not that common in cities, French restaurants. Anybody here play D&D? I've played once. I, I used to play. My brother had a big walk-in closet and he set up like a six foot table in there and then like decorated the room and would like play loud music in there and it was like the little D&D &D dungeon. I found out a fun fact about Animal's dad, Anna, Annabelle's dad, if she's comfortable sharing. <laughs> you don't need to share on the chat if you're not comfortable. Okay, I mean, I don't know. We <laughs> I shall could text my dad and ask him, Dad. We shall move on from this right. topic. <laughs> Just know that D and D is fun to play. I'm more of a RuneScape person myself. Oh my Ooh. God! I you know. Unlocked some deep memories. I know. Hot take. I had to stop playing because now I have responsibilities. <laughs> I was playing a little bit too much. Yeah. Does it exist still? Is it, still around? it does. Old school RuneScape is currently on the laptop that's sitting in front of me. Really. <laughs> Wait, it was, isn't it like a, a web-based game? Yeah, it is. So how's But it? you can download the software onto your computer, and then oh. you just click, double-click on it, and it opens up into old-school RuneScape. Because what they have right now on the, on the website is the new RuneScape, and I'm not really a fan of that. I think the first version was the best version. Uh, yeah. If anybody else out there plays RuneScape, that's for you. <laughs> so one of the signs of addiction is protecting sources. The what? Protecting sources. It's where you keep a stash of something that you're... Okay. <laughs> because you have the old version on your laptop, you can go to it anytime you want. <laughs> okay, analogy not working here. Sorry, Dave, I couldn't really hear you. Yeah, it's hard to hear you. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> According to the meters on the scope on the uh, audio thing here, I'm talking very loudly. But I've yeah. seen that throughout this year that video seat has not been able to be heard by anybody in the room, generally. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Like, Good. no matter who's there, no matter how loud of a speaker they are. Good. Well, we'll just keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it, is it RuneScape or Ru Rim, rimscape. Yeah, I have no rimscape. idea what you're talking about. Are you any? This is a new like a ri yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. yeah, RuneScape. It's um, it's an MMORPG, so oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, a multiplayer role-playing game. It's open source world, so you can just roam around. It has like goblins and dragons and yeah. Goblin is fish. this like World of Warcraft? Yeah, like World of <laughs> Warcraft, but free to play unless you yeah. pay for the membership. Do you pay for the membership? I did at one point. <laughs> I, I played a lot. Of I admit with some shame. <laughs> I played a lot of RuneScape, but I didn't pay for the membership. But I did pay for the membership for Club Penguin, so I can decorate my egg glue. Oh, 
<laughs> all cool if, if, if anyone was a club penguin player. My younger sibling was. I even got, I was obsessed with that game. I even got like the DS um, game for it, which was like a spy story. Cause they like introduced spies in the game. But I guess I'm the only one on Club Penguin Island. What, whatever keeps you guys out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I really? guess it was. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> what about like <laughs> Webkins? Webkins, I, I played a bit of Webkins because you know I wanted the stuffed animals, but when the when the rumors of like um of like glitches and stuff started happening, and it kind of scared me away from Webkins. Glitches, rumors. Hmm. What was that? Rumors of glitches. Yeah, I don't know if they were glitches, but like. I, they were almost like creepy pastas, almost of like spooky things happening in the game. That was really a thing back in the day, like sort of scary stories about like stuff on the internet. That's creepy pastas. Yeah, creepy pasta. It's a scary internet story. It's a website where people just—it was kind of like Reddit, but for scary stories. So people would just write short stories and post them there. They're usually about like games and stuff on the internet if i remember correctly there was a lot about like like not internet related stuff too but um mo yeah most of them were about like creepy internet stories hmm. <laughs> someone on the chat said i swear every dive you guys reveal new levels of nerd <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Chat but gross. they said, and I become more convinced my proper place in life is on that ship. So, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. RuneScape was not my coolest endeavor. I'll say that. I think it's pretty cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> my sure. last memory of RuneScape was someone stole all my stuff. They tricked me. You got no. scammed. I got scammed. No, at the grand exchange. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor, do you play any video games? I know a lot of ROV pilots do. Some people transfer and have video game hobbies. Yeah, I do not. I have over my life every now and then, but I haven't in years. I mean, maybe once or twice in years. I don't I can remember the last video game I played. Okay. Uh, just an update for everyone watching. We are ascending our vehicles back to the surface. Uh, we left the seamount at about, like, what, 1,700 meters? 1,700 meters? Um, making our way up, we're now at 1,200-ish meters. Someone in the chat said they've been playing RuneScape for 11-plus years from Portland, Oregon. Wow. How do you exercise the self-control? <laughs> <laughs> I remember during university exams, a friend of mine's like, hey, I found this new game. It's called Minecraft. Do you want to play? Oh, oh Minecraft. no. <laughs> Not during exams. Oh, yeah. So did you play? Yeah. Did you play a lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I passed, but it wasn't by much. <laughs> My game of choice, really, in uh, in university was foosball. Foosball. I had a really nice foosball table in the building that I would study in, and it was great for study breaks. Played a lot of foosball. A lot of foosball. The thing with video games for me is I'll play them, like, obsessively for a month, and then I'll kind of just drop them. Like, I'll get bored or something. So I never really end up completing video games. I, I like watch watching people play them yeah. because I'm terrible at it. That's that's what I do now. I watch I watch streamers play video games. Oh that's <laughs> I, I did play a bit of video games during the start of COVID. <coughs> hey right, video's uh, video's gonna exchange places here for a little bit. Roger. Okay. Panos is coming in.
You said you played video games during the start of COVID? I did, yeah. What did you play? I played Far Cry 5. Never That's heard a good of one. It. I had roommates at the time and they were playing it. I'm like, ooh, that looks like a good way to pass the time at home. Can't leave. Great. Parks are all closed, beaches are closed. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to play video games. Someone in the chat said I told my PhD advisor that I was taking a week off at the start of summer to see some personal business. I didn't get to during the semester. It was actually to take a week playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like that's personal business that you didn't get to take care of. That's valid. My favorite video game is Okami. Okami? I've never heard of that one. It's it's kind of very similar gameplay to Zelda, but you're playing as like the sun goddess that's kind of uh, like come to earth in quotes. I don't know if it's supposed to be earth as a wolf, oh. um, and you get to like paint uh, like celestial, and it has a lot of celestial creatures and beings in it. And you like kind of do I don't want to call it magic, but you can like do things by drawing with ink on your tail. It's like very like traditional Japanese themed. It's beautiful and there's a lot of soccer trees and it's just a beautifully made game. Sounds beautiful. I played a lot of Hollow Knight during COVID. Mm -hmm. It's another good game. Anyone else take up any COVID-specific hobbies during COVID? I was playing uh, Star Wars. Star Wars? Your Republic. <laughs> yes. I like Star Wars. I, unpopular opinion, I'm not really a fan of Star Wars. Do you like Star Trek? Yep. Uh, I mean, it's better than Star Wars, I think. But I'm not like a super fan or anything. I used to watch the like four hour long Star Trek marathons on Spike TV every Friday night. <laughs> you gotta make your way over to Ticonderoga, New York because some guy like bought the set of Star Trek and set it up as a museum wow. type experience so you could like be on the set of Star Trek. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched anything Star Trek in a while. When I watched those marathons, I was about 11, <laughs> 12 years old. But yeah. Next gen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried well, to watch it. Star Wars once, but okay. I, I like, I just couldn't keep watching. Like, I just it wasn't really sucking me in, and I don't remember anything that happened. Did anyone take up bread baking? Yes. During COVID? No. Annabelle, what breads did you bake? Um, I, I'm gluten free, so I got a little more into the gluten free baking side of things and like trying to recreate things gluten free. Um, I really got into making a Scandinavian Christmas bread, like braided mm. like breads mm -hmm. and stuff. Do they turn out good? Yeah, they turn out pretty good. They're like cardamom bread. Um, it's called yulkaka. Um, it's like cardamom and it has like little like dried fruits and stuff in it mm -hmm. and made into fancy shapes. Is it like fruitcake or is it more bread-like? It's more bread-like. It's like bread. It's like bread. It's, it's bread that's like bread. <laughs> yes, the bready bread. Bread bread. People in the chat are asking when the next dive will be. Stay, uh, you can stay up to date on our social medias and our website, nautiluslive.org, um, for dive alerts. We'll post them when we are diving next. 
feel like we need a publicly accessible whiteboard cam. <laughs> <laughs> no one, the world doesn't need to see its lies. The board of <laughs> lies. It's more like the board of heartbreak, really. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane Dora was rough on everyone, I see. This expedition at the Johnson Atoll um, goes on until the end of August, so we're, you know, hoping, and we have planned many more dives until then. But sometimes weather conditions deny us dive time. Deny. Deny. <laughs> I was watching them. They're as good as we can expect. You know, when I when we're not diving, I have like a whole queue of blue water questions in my brain, but when we're actually in blue water, I cannot remember. Well, we now know that a lot of us are nerds <laughs> in more than one way. Did Dave's anybody play any sports? Dave's back in video. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Um, I was a swimmer for a little bit um, in high school, but then I had to make the choice between swimming or working at Taco Bell and taking some like after-school art classes, and I chose the working at Taco Bell and taking after school art classes, so no sports after that. Taco Bell. I did track and field and flag football. Flag football? And a little bit of volleyball. What did you do in track and field? Did you run or did you do field? I'm a sprinter. Okay, I did a little bit of sh uh, shot put, or discus throwing. I hated sprinters. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you have against sprinters? What'd you do? Your practice starts all day, and I'm out there running multiple miles. <laughs> well, it's not our fault. We have quick muscle, <laughs> I, I would, and you're built for endurance. <laughs> I, would, I would run five miles before school, five miles after school, and five miles after work. <laughs> and we do 100-meter bursts. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta work on my start. <laughs> then I'd have, at the track meets, I'd have to run three and a half miles. Oh my gosh. I do the two mile relay, mile and two mile. No, nope, 200 meter was my cap. <laughs> Had no interest in running long distances. That was a tough day. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't understand why people want to run for fun. <laughs> because we can. Because, wow. Are you saying I can't because it's not fun for me? It's okay. <laughs> I'll admit I'm not very good at running. And that's also why I did flag football, because my hand-eye coordination is terrible. Catching was terrible, but the quarterback would just hold the ball behind their back, and then I'd sprint by and grab it, and nobody could catch me once <laughs> it was in my hands. But I was me catching the ball was not so great. I was going to say, is it, don't you need hand-eye coordination <laughs> for flag football? I could throw it really well, but catching was the problem. Did you have to grab anybody's flags? Yes. Or? So don't you need hand-eye coordination for that? I could do that. It was the ball for some um, reason. Hmm. Anything that involved speed, because I think I would run too fast, and then where the ball was going, I'd run past it. Your calculations so, were off? Yeah, my calculations were off. Foot-eye coordination. <laughs> Foot-eye ball air coordination. <laughs> yeah, I played football since I was six years old all through high school. Oh, peewee football. What position? Uh, and both ways. Mm. Yeah, I started playing football when I was 11. What position were you? Uh, line, usually, because you kind of just have to stand there and <laughs> run into guys. <laughs> Didn't require any talent or any of that hand-eye coordination like you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that reminded me. I played soccer in middle school. I was the goalie because ah. I didn't have to run. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I used to play 
soccer as well. Yeah. 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 It was fun. What position? Uh, on top. So like the like, offense? Like a the front lateral line? on the left. But not in the front line, but over the middle, yeah. midfield. I I forget what the positions are called, but I know what you're talking about. I rode in high school. That's cool. Corsets? Uh, no. Crew. Row like, like rowing. Oh, I rowing, thought you said road. Oh no. <laughs> wow, high school crew is not not something you see all the time. Well, it wasn't at my school. There was uh, a there club. Was a there's a small rowing club down on the Duwamish Waterway. Oh, sure, um, yeah. And I rode with them. Yeah. It was really fun. I would have loved to have that option. Mm hmm There was lots of rowing around Victoria. Mm hmm Yeah. Row, yeah. Seattle, I mean, just uh, there's there's clubs all over all over Seattle. UW's a big rowing school, has yeah. been for years. There's anybody, a lot of Anybody read the book Boys in the Boat? No. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah about the uh, rowing team in the 36 Olympics, was it? Something like that. I know there's a lot of rowing in Philadelphia with the colleges there. Um, yeah, it's a very level. sort of Ivy League sort of. Yeah, but thing. I know some, um, there's a really big like private school, high school, that's like a, a boarding school that has like a big rowing team there as well. Oh, neat, yeah. I forget what it's called. A lot of the uh, private schools in the area would have, or like the Catholic schools, would have rowing teams that would compete against us. O'Day? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember what the name of the girls' school was, but they had uh, one too. Yeah. So a guy that I uh, played in band with uh, was, a, uh, was a rower on the 60 Olympics team. Oh, wow. Uh, hmm. And got a bronze medal. Was he and tall? Yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah. And he continued to row, row then through the rest of his life. Uh, when I first met him, he was about 73, something like that. And wow. he was uh, a member of a rowing club. Uh, they had a, a, a shell on Lake Union somewhere in somebody's, on somebody's uh, dock, a little house. And, uh, and he was a, a UW alum. Uh, and been on the UW rowing team, and then was on the Olympic team, and uh, yeah, he uh, he and his and his buddies would go out in the morning and row on uh, on Lake, Lake Union. Union, yeah, or sometimes uh, through the cut and out uh, uh, onto uh, Lake Washington as well. Yeah, they were they were called the Ancient Mariners. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and then uh, they would get up early in the morning. They would go out and row. They would come back. Uh, put the shell away, and then they would go to Vula's. You know Vula's oh, offshore? Vula's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Top of uh, Lake They make Lake really Union. good hash browns. Oh, my God, their <laughs> hash browns are the best. Yep. Uh, and they had their own table uh, with a picture of them there oh. and uh, that kind of stuff. That's awesome. So, yeah. I've gone and sat at the table before. He's gone now. He passed away. But uh, he and I uh, played in community band together. I'm a tuba player. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. Tuba. Yep. Who said they were a bass guitar player? Me, uh, Mariah. Mar okay. Yeah, yeah. I played the baritone saxophone. Oh, nice. Should have brought our instruments. Right? Could have had a band. I was a violinist <laughs> a in the West Live. Seattle Community Orchestra for a <laughs> really? while. Nice. Wow. See, multi talented crew here on the Nautilus. There you go. All sorts of hobbies. But I'm more of a bass guitar owner than a player, but uh, <laughs> I, I do play a little bit. Uh, and I play trumpet and tuba and everything in between. Wow. I have no less than three tubas. That's impressive. I have a, a, a student horn uh, that I bought when I first picked it back up again. And then the, uh, I have a sousaphone, which is a marching yeah. tuba. That's when people think of tubas, that's what they usually think of. It's a big round one that you wear uh, over your shoulder. Uh, and uh, I have a uh, uh, an orchestral tuba. Uh, that's so many tubas. Yeah, I know. This one's really nice, too. It's about a $7,000 horn. And, uh, wow. Do you play tuba? I do, yeah. Cool. yeah. Not anymore, because there's no place to play. Uh, when I lived in Seattle, there were uh, there were two community bands that I played in in, in Shoreline. There's lots of community bands in Seattle. Uh, I played in two up in Shoreline. You ever I go to Honkfest? No. Oh, that... 
there were a bunch of like uh, marching bands and community bands would all get together in Georgetown and play. Oh, really? Yeah, huh. there was like a big festival. We did go up to uh, to Victoria for Victoria Day uh, oh. several times, and that's all uh, high school bands uh, and some community bands and that kind of stuff, and a big parade uh, down through Victoria, and, and uh, the bands play on the uh, on the steps of the uh, uh, Parliament House. That's amazing. And, and then all around town, uh, and we went up as a community band and played there. Uh, over Victoria Day weekend. That's a lot of fun. But I moved to uh, I moved to the coast of Oregon, and uh, and can't find a community band nearby. Plus, I'm not there enough. And uh, same in Anchorage. I've I've played in, in a couple of community bands in Anchorage, but I'm not there enough to commit to being in a band. So. Does anyone play the banjo? I've always wanted to play the banjo. I have a friend who plays the banjo. Nice. Maddie, our communications lead, says she plays the mandolin. Ooh. Wow, that's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Really? I didn't know that. She says only because it's easier than the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend has a banjo, but it's a four string. So like when I was trying to learn how to play it through like YouTube videos, I can only find like five string um, banjo tutorials. Is it missing one or is it like strung differently? Nope, it's strung differently, only four. The fifth on five string banjos, the fifth one is like kind of down the neck a little bit. Um, and it has the usual four up at the top. It's kind of cool. The uh, four strings more of a strumming banjo, right? Mm -hmm. And the uh, five strings more of a picking banjo. Yeah, I think that's that's yeah. it. Yeah, like you hear in bluegrass. Yep. Yeah, I'm a big bluegrass fan. I I was into one of my students uh, was in a bluegrass band, and he was really good. Still plays in bands down in North Carolina or South Carolina. There's a. Um, a really good banjo player I saw live once called, he goes by Tall Tall Trees, I think. Hmm. Um, and he would like drum on the banjo while playing it. Interesting. Um, it, it was really cool to see live. Bela Fleck is a oh, yeah. banjo player who's been around a long time. Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones. I have a bluegrass album that uh, where various bluegrass groups uh, play Van Halen songs. Nice. <laughs> it's called Strumming with the Devil. A couple of them have David Lee Roth singing. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's an eclectic. I don't think I've heard yeah. of that. What is that? What is the band? There's uh, there's several different bands on there. I, I, can't, okay. I can't remember the name of the bands. Maybe I'm thinking of something yeah. else. Yeah, but uh, this is a collection of various bands, but the they all play. Uh, Van Halen songs. That's awesome. Including, there's a, a guy that plays Eruption on uh, on a banjo. The, you know, the solo of Van, Eddie Van Halen That's cool. thing where he's tapping all up and down the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, neck and all of that kind of stuff. Guy plays that on banjo. It's crazy. If you could play any instrument, you know, what would you play? Piano. Bass guitar is my favorite. 
simply because I love funk music and disco. That's why I started playing it. <laughs> nice. But if you can play any <laughs> other instrument, what would you play? Uh, well, I was forced to play piano when I was little, so definitely not that. Oh, shrimp. <laughs> no offense, Paula. I'll no. transfer my piano to you. <laughs> violin is cool. Oh, you're muted, Paula. I, uh, I used to play violin when I was a uh, kid. I was playing that uh, until I was 13 or 14. But I want, I always I wanted to play piano. But it was full book every year. Yeah. My grandma used to try to teach me. Um, we'd sit together and try to and play, but I don't remember. Huh? Like, I, I know how to play, like, oh. but I can't, like, play the piano. Like, I know what, where the notes are and stuff, but I'm not very uh, good with, with my hands on it. Have to have a very good coordination. Yeah. Left and right hand. Yeah. It's really difficult. Guitar. I keep threatening to play guitar. I mean, I own a guitar, and uh, a really nice one, too. But I have procrastinated long <laughs> enough. <that laughs> I was going to say, I like how you own all these instruments. Oh, I do. I do. I have, uh, yeah, I have th uh, three tubas, uh, a trumpet, a guitar. Two three-bus. <laughs> two <laughs> two three-bus. Three yes, that's correct. Uh, bass guitar, um, some little keyboards, and... That kind of stuff. So, oh, a trombone. You have a trombone too. I do. Yeah. You have a whole band. Yeah, pretty much. I remember. Uh, I also tried to take guitar lessons, but I I went to like a a teacher for that, um, and I don't remember anything from those lessons either. But I do remember the guitar teacher had a really cute pug, and he used he was one of those people that like grew out one of his fingernails to strum instead of using a pick and it kind of like grossed me out when i was a kid <laughs> we learned how to play the spongebob theme song and the aladdin uh, magic carpet no. ride song no, nice but i can't play them anymore no. i think knowing how to play either the guitar or the piano would be nice because those are both instruments that you can really casually play. Like, there's some really cool instruments out there, but if you can just see a piano and sit down to it and play a song on it, that would be cool. I feel like piano and guitars are also like the 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 bass instruments, not like bass, like bass, bass, you know, like deep, but like the instruments that people will use to like write songs and stuff and like figure melodies out. Chat says they want to play the theremin. <laughs> <laughs> Was that you trying to make a theremin noise? I don't know, it's like <laughs> something. I'm thinking Beach Boys or... Oh, oh fish. Still haven't reached our oxygen minimum oxygen minimum zone. We're at 21 micromoles per liter right now. What depth do we expect that at? I'd say around before we reach 500. Okay. Or around 500. What what are we at now? Five ninety eight. Yep. Chat also, someone in chat plays the double bass. Cool. That's cool, huh? What's the double bass? Like Two the upright ones. bass? That's the upright bass. Oh. Oh, a little fishy. Played that in high school. 
in my senior year I had uh, all my credits to graduate and everything so I took all music and drama classes and, uh, and I was the teacher's assistant for the band teacher and all of that kind of stuff uh, so I would go and sit in on the cadet orchestra uh, and and play uh, I was trying to learn bass guitar and I had been playing bass guitar uh, just kind of by ear in uh, the uh, jazz band. Uh, there was another guy who was much better at it than I was, but he and I were both trumpet players and we switched off depending on which song uh, he wanted to play. And so I would learn the songs on bass. Uh, and then to make get my bass technique better, I would uh, play the double bass in the orchestra. So I have forgotten all of that now. <laughs> Once again, more of a bass guitar owner than a player. Does the double bass use a, um, you know, like a yeah, stick thingy I had to a bow? Yeah, a bow, I had yeah. to learn. I actually had to learn how to bow, and that's uh, that's interesting. Is plus, it plus it's huge. Is it different than a cello? It's bigger than a cello, but oh the same. Oh my god, bigger than a cello. Well, I mean, it's a big upright bass. You have to bass. stand up to play it. You have to stand it. up to play it. Oh, you have to stand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bowing was interesting. I wasn't too excited about that. I was more just interested in, in uh, learning finger positions and that kind of stuff, which is really different on a double bass because A, no frets, and B, it's huge. The, the uh, neck is, is huge. You have to have strong fingers and reach across. Yeah. Press the, the uh, strings down quite hard. Speaking of, like, huge instruments, the harp would also be cool to play. Very uh, cool. Ooh. Yeah. Still at 21. What did you say the minimum was for the dive down? Do we know? We, it's written somewhere way, way back in the mm -hmm. logs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have it on hand. But normally the minimum going down and the minimum coming up are a little different. Yeah. It's like we, a we 200 to 300 meter discrepancy and We've noticed with some of the sensors that there's an odd hysteresis going down versus coming up. Oh. But it's been more in the, in the hadal regions and it's more extreme. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if there's a pressure effect on the uh, sensor that doesn't allow it to recover in a oh. timely manner. We don't know. Okay. Tried to work with Seabird on it, but you know, I'm not sure where we are on that sort of aspect. If anyone yeah. in the chat has some good questions for us, the chat is open. We hit the minimum at 20 micromoles per liter. That's about 500 meters. Bronca, do you have a, a fact for us? Hydrothermal vent fact? Mm -hmm. Or just a fact in general? <laughs> hydrothermal vent fact. <laughs> All right, here is the hydrothermal vent fact. Did you know 
that the metals at hydrothermal vents are mainly base metals. So you know how controversial topic, different people around the world are interested in deep sea mining, right? Um, there are three types of deep sea mining. There is the polymetallic nodule mining, which is basically like the nodules on the sea floor that you can kind of, it's kind of like running a vacuum over sand grains on a table. Um, and then there's the hydrothermal vent mining, and then there's the uh, cobalt crust mining, which occurs on seamounts. And hydrothermal vents contain mainly base metals, so things like copper, lead, iron, um, and zinc. Those are the main components. There's your fact. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. W would, they be, would they be considered stand-up base metals? Stand-up oh. base metals. I'm not sure what, what that, what is a stand-up base metal? Oh, oh. <laughs> a gotcha. dad joke. <laughs> oh, absolutely gotten. Dad joke. <laughs> uh, brown one. There's yeah. a lots of, there's the lots lab. of them though, so it's double base metals. <laughs> yeah, double base. <laughs> Can you go up at 22 meters a minute, please? I thought that was something I had never heard of before. <laughs> I was going to add it to my candidacy exam study I'll list. <laughs> 22, maybe 23, but you can keep it closer to 22 One if you can. moment, let me move it. Delicate. It's that time in the watch where my brain starts to fizzle out. Nice, thank you. Okay, now, now don't move. <laughs> It's already 24, 25. Oh, right. <laughs> there is some wrongness in that because you're setting the winch speed, which is constant, but the overboarding shiv is what actually measures it. So, so it's measuring a bit of ship movement as well? A little bit, yeah. If there's any, ever any slack on the line, it'll change that ship speed. Okay. Okay, it's 23. 23, 23 is fine. What's everybody's favorite mode of transportation? Jetpack. Jet <laughs> I wasn't expecting free that. Fall. <laughs> free, free fall. Free <laughs> fall. <laughs> All right, this took a turn. Sitting on top of Atalanta and going to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> like Bobby Argus. Bobby Argus. <laughs> Sounds like Power Rangers assembly or something. <laughs> All right, if we're going that route, then Flying Dragon, maybe? <laughs> that dinosaur. <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> I, I'm a, I really like rollerblading, on a real note. That's, that's cool. Rollerblading's cool. Also biking, but biking, I don't yeah. have a bike right now. <gasps> I don't either. I sold mine recently. I had a beautiful bike. Its name was Avocado. It was green. It was like a Serva, I think the brand was. They don't really make um, normal bikes anymore. They, I think they mostly make e-bikes, but um, it was stolen off my porch. Oh, no. no. And, I can, and I looked to buy another one, and they don't make them anymore. Did you check on local eBay? I did. I checked everywhere. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> There was something tentacly in the Atalanta for a second. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It was. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Tina 4? Perhaps? Too fast. Tina 40. <laughs> Tina no more. <laughs> Tina no more. Oh. <laughs> Is roller, roller blading or roller skating? Do you do the four wheels or the line of wheels? I do the line, in line. I only do the four when forced at rink. <laughs> <laughs> what about ice skating? Oh, I've been ice skating since I was like three years old. That's, oh. uh, you learn how to walk and then you learn how to skate. The stereotypical Canadian way. Not all Canadians <laughs> skate. I'll put that out there. <laughs> there are actually a lot of us that don't. I can skate pretty well, but I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
that's what the other people are for. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. The boards. The boards. The boards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what the ground is for. <laughs> I was joking with Gabby that a hockey stop is going to be on her citizenship test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My kids all played hockey, and uh, I coached, and uh, that was that was fun. But I'm only a uh, beginner's hockey coach. Oh. I teach kids how to skate and uh, some of the basics of the game, uh, that kind of stuff, and then send them on to real coaches when they get proficient enough to. Uh, actually play the game. Dave, you're full of stories and yeah. hobbies. Mm -hmm. I've been around a long time. It's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Comes with the gray hair. Oh, I was going to say I coach baseball, too, uh, and and Little League Baseball and, and had a, a group of kids in the neighborhood that all went to the same school and taught them how to play baseball and hit the ball and all that kind of stuff. And then they all switched to soccer one summer. And I was lost. I couldn't. Aww. I never played soccer. I couldn't coach soccer. I just learned to watch soccer. And That's sad. No, it was it was all right. My uh, Two of my kids uh, were very good soccer players. Uh, but one of them went to, uh, went to college and played uh, college hockey. And another one went to college and played college soccer. He was a keeper as well. And... Uh, so. Yeah, interesting double dip in the uh, oxygen, too. Now it's going oh, back yeah. up. yeah. A double dip? Yeah, it kind of went down and up again, then down a little prolonged. Are we looking at the purple yep. or the green? The saturation or the concentration? Concentration. Saturation. I mean, they kind of mimic each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you see how it kind of cor correlates with the uh, salinity too. So it's probably could be a water mass issue, partially. Would it be? An, is it an issue, or is it just a no? It's just a situation. Yeah, salinity is really dropping. saturations come up fast we can breathe Two hundred and sixty meters. Two hundred and sixty meters till lunch. Today is Monday. Today is Monday. Has anyone heard of the controversial um, topic of what day the week starts? Does it start on Sunday or does it start on Monday? Monday. Monday. I say. Really? I'm a Sunday person. Interesting. I think Why? It's um, because it's the week end. The week end. Like the end of the week, on um, the end of the front of the week, and that, you know, it caps the weeks off. The week ends, to me, in my head. 
So okay. you have one weekend day in the front and one weekend day in the back. That's, I've never heard it described that way before. In my brain. All I know is the default on my Google Calendar has Sunday at one end and Saturday at the other. That too, yeah. But some, some like planners and, and calendars have Monday yeah. in the front. I think it's, that's only in the USA. Yeah, I think Europeans do a Monday. European, yeah. Hmm. So who's excited for the samples? I am. Paula. <laughs> you got the squat claws in the air. I am. <laughs> the Mina Dots claws. <laughs> what are the claws called? <laughs> are they called claws or there, is there a special word? Claws. Claws is good, claws. but it would be more accurate, kila. That's the scientific term for the, oh. for the pincers. Pin pincers. OK, pincers is another word, I guess. I'm forgetting like what we sampled. We but sampled a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we went from sample 45 number 45 up to 70. Mm, that includes rocks too, right? Yep, rocks, one push core, four niskins, bunch of bio samples. I'm excited for the isopod. I want to see it out of the water. Since slurp jar number 5, I think. Me too. Got a lot of great stuff in the jars num this time. Number six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jars were full for the first time. How many squats did we get? Four? Two. Two. Two, Two many. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I keep Too falling for those dad <laughs> joke singers today. <laughs> Chat wants to know if we've seen the meteor shower. Yes, we did. We yes, were up we there did. last night. I, me and Annabelle, I think it was, saw one <laughs> that shot all across the sky. Right. It was like the biggest trail I've ever seen in my life. Like long enough where I could really point to it. It went like a third of the way across the sky. It was amazing. Yeah. Maronke and I saw one too. Yeah, I saw a smaller one. I was there for the big one, but... But the thingy was in the way? Yep. Part of the ship blocked my view. Did you see a little bit of it? Because it was, it was long. I saw your arm go Yeah, like it must have been at least, you know, a handful of seconds. Yeah, yeah. It was. I didn't see any of it, but I just knew it was big because of how large the fan motion your arm made was. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the whole thing either. I only saw part of it. No, I saw the whole thing. I could almost see the, the like the, the sparklies, the, no, the, is it like a, a little rock that's coming down? I could almost see the, the thing at the top of the tail. Stardust. It was magical. In general, the stars out here are very good. Yeah. Should I go to Manuel Winch? Because uh, they take control at 50, yeah? That was a good time. All right, everybody viewing at home, uh, pilots got to take control of bringing Hercules back to the surface. So now's the time we're going to say our goodbyes. Uh, follow us on NautilusLive.org and our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, now called X, um, for upcoming dive alerts and updates. See you all soon. Again. Yeah, it keeps zooming out. Nope.
Oh, keep coming up, 21 meters a minute. I'd like 50 meter spacing. Thank you. You can do 23 meters a minute. You gotta go way out, way, way out. Hey. Good, except we can't zoom this out. What's that? We can't zoom this out. It's been trying for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, better this way than... You can't see the ship, huh? Yeah, forces are good. It's been stable. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're all good. All right, I'm gonna pop down. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. See how closely you can time the uh, handover to 50 minutes past the hour. You might need to slow down a little bit now. That'll get you up a little early. Yep. I'm past you. I'm five meters above you on the delta depth. Yes, you have three minutes to go 20 meters. I'm going to try to zoom out more while you do your checklist. There we go. Yes. Yes. Thanks.
think that might be on your checklist, but I've stopped the sonars. I did it. Yeah, it's just, yeah, we're not ready yet. We're play at five five meters, so stand by one. You can do it now. You can just go go right there. No, I'm talking to Anna, talking to Annabelle. You can just go right to fifty now. Stop though. Okay. Okay. Control van. Control van, go ahead. Winch at five zero meters. Have control. All right. Now, do you remember your last minute tasks? Before you secure it, you got to do something with it. Yeah. And again, not quite all the way, not all the way to the hard stop, just back from it. Can you set auto center to the ship, please? Yeah, maybe a tip down, a little bump down. Yeah, good, perfect. Great. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yep. I need to launch recover salvo. Panos has taken over in video. Roger. Hello. Follow us on video. Who's the person wearing all white? Very fancy. I think that's Remy. Oh, okay. Can I have bubble on gauges, please? Thank you.
she's sloshing around back there. Oh, it's terrible. There we go. For, keep going for now. Okay. Uh, now we can hold position. Roger. Now this is the bridge. Great. Bridge. You want us to hold position, is that correct? Yes. Hold position. Yeah, do all comms on the radio. No headset anymore.
station to start connected to the grid. Bridge copies. Roger. All right, that's her coming clear of the transom. Oh, oh right, yeah. Yep, bridge copies. Work under the crane. Coming out. Control copies. And bridge copies.